Oh, nice. Scott Bruder here. So, the task today is to replace a blown fuse after we test it with a, nope, not a 1 amp fuse, a 1.25 amp fuse. These are important. So, what we have here is a Game Boy Micro. And just in case it's, you know, healed itself while we've been gone, I'm going to try turning it on. And no, no mystic magic healing. So what we're going to do is first and foremost, I'm going to receive, return, uh, remove the cover. It clips on the left side and then kind of buckles in on the right. So I'm just going to slide my nail and pull up on it. We got this beautiful silver. I believe this is, this is the original uh, cover. So I'm going to set that aside, hit it with a bit of Windex before we finish. We've got the system here. No screw holes on the front to deal with, so we'll flip it over. The game slot here on the bottom, put that off to the side. And then we need to take a look at where the screws are. So there's a standard Phillips head screw on the side here. On the top, we've got some tri-wings. On the other side, we've got a couple more tri-wings. And on the bottom, no screws. Okay, so let's grab a standard screwdriver and we'll start there. Okay, first, standard Phillips head screw. Now Nintendo did something really good here. They put a little lock washer on this screw, so you can't actually remove the screw from the body. Um, it will always stay connected to uh, the battery compartment, so don't feel like you need to get it off because uh, it won't come and if you do get it off um, It's uh, Damaging the device uh, Focus there we go. So you can see that little uh, C C lock there Perfect set that off to the side. We've got our battery So let's take a look at what I did wrong in the first place. So the red positive line is always closest to the bottom of the device and the black ground negative ground line is always closest to the top remember that for the future everybody black is at the top red is at the bottom set that to the side so at this point of the show let's we'll take a look again we've got a couple more phillips screws and then we start getting into the tri wings there's another phillips and there's another phillips so let's take the two yellow dichromate yeah that's what you call that yellowy kind of goldy color and we'll just set that to the side and we'll get another yellow one yellow dichromate screw set that off and then we've got two stainless i don't know if they're stainless or just aluminum the silvery color screws let's go with that those ones are a little bit longer so because of their orientation compared to the little battery compartment. I'm going to just bring them over. Same thing here. Perfect. And I'll set that beside the other one. And if we notice, they're both the same size. So now I take a look around. Try wing, try wing, try wing, try wing, try wing, try wing. So at this point of the show, I'm going to sit aside my Phillips and I'm going to go grab my tri-wing. Of course, I happen to pick up the Phillips. Has a, a little tri-wing 2.0 by 40 millimeter long. So take care of this tri-wing. Take that out. Set it here. And I'll grab another tri wing. Take that out. Sit it right beside it. Maybe if there's not space, I'll go one below. Right, and then we've got the ones on the top. These ones are stubby little black ones. Everybody remembers stubby little black ones go on the outside. Take that, put it there. Same thing with this one here. Take that one, put it there. We'll take a look at the ones on the side. There's two again. That 
that's the same size screw so I'm just going to sit it beside it even though it's the same size and we'll grab the fourth one and we'll take a look here drop that there done so if we take a quick look around the unit I feel we're at the point of the show where I can separate it so I'm going to start with the battery compartment on the back and I'm just going to lift and it comes off perfect set that to the side and I can see the game cartridge slot and the plastic reinforcement that holds the whole body together now I can see right now a Phillips screwdriver bit and another Phillips screwdriver bit and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of get a little aggressive pull a little bit on it it looks like this plastic unibody piece here is not secured so what I'm going to do so I'm just going to try and pull it out and see if it moves. And it looks like it doesn't. So this is the point where I'm going to go back to my Phillips screwdriver. Ta-da! And I'm going to think that it's being supported by this Phillips screw here. So I'm just going to pop in there, take that one off. And because this is not magnetized, I'll take this. And I'll set it here. Now it looks like it is the exact same size as the other two. So I don't need to worry about confusing it. Let's see if I can get that plastic frame off now. And I can. So that plastic frame is held in place by that screw. And we'll go over here as well and see if we can get all of it off. So the left side is good. The right side seems pretty snug. Ah, take a look here. There's a little pressure fit. A little uh, release needs to fire in order to get that one to go. So I'm going to just put my little tweezers behind that and see if I can get that to lift off. And there we go. Now, one of the shoulder buttons popped off. Take a look. There's a little screw in the shoulder button spot. So I'm just going to sit that off to the side with the screw in it. And I'll go to the other side as well and grab the shoulder button on that side with the little spring in it. While we were doing this, my little power switch or my volume slider fell off. So I'm just going to move that off to the side and keep it safe. And I'm going to lift off this body. And sure enough, that single piece of plastic has come off. So I'm going to take that and set it up above the board. And I think the only thing I'm missing here that might still be loose is going to be the power switch. Does it lift off? No, it seems to be pressed under, uh, under that side of the board. So I think I got to get this off first. So taking a look at the board, I see that Phillips head screw that I had seen before, as well as another Phillips head screw over here on the left. So let's take these off. These ones are also yellow dichromate. So take that off. I'm going to compare it to the other yellow dichromate. It looks pretty close, but I'm going to set it off to the side. And now I'm going to just inspect the other one, and that is indeed a Phillips head screw, yellow dichromate. And we'll go with the last one that I had seen. Granted, there could be more. Who knows? Another Phillips head screw, yellow dichromate, the yellow ones. And this one here is coming out, but I feel like it was the last one, so it had a lot of pressure on it. And pull that off, keep it to the side. We're looking at this unit. Can we just lift the motherboard off? Let's find out. So I'm going to grasp it by the uh, charging port, as well as the plastic on the game cartridge port. I'm going to lift, and it doesn't want to come going to see if maybe there's a way to peel off this metallic uh, shield. Oh, yeah, that does move. Let's uh, grab the tweezers, see if there's something we can do to kind of wiggle that off. Oh, looks like it grasps down here at the bottom of the plate. So I feel if I take the whole thing and kind of like lift it off on an angle, it will come. So let's try that. We'll try the left hand side where the buttons are and the right hand side and we will try and lift it off oh it looks like it wants to move 
So there we go. We've got the metal plate off, tilted up, and we've got the rest of the board kind of moving freely, but it's still biting on something. So the question is, what is it biting on? Well, I can tell you. Let's see if I can adjust the lighting. Well, let's see if we can get you some additional lighting, maybe make life a little easier. There we go. There's a ribbon cable and another ribbon cable. I'm assuming the one here, the big one, is your video, and the one off to the side is your backlight. So I'm just going to flip that little retainer clip up. Uh, doesn't want to work. Now, granted, we are are dealing with a, a machine that's whew, 15, 20 years old. Uh, I see down here we've also got the little ribbon cable for the start and select buttons. So I know I have to release at least three cables. I do think I want to release the screen first and then deal with the start select button. So we'll go back down there with the... There we go. There's the big one of the one screen and we'll push it down and then we got this little one here that I believe lifts up from the top and then we'll get rid of the screen let's see if we can zoom in and I'll just show you that a little closer so the one for the the screen the wide one lifts up from the bottom and the one here that I think is for the power uh, the backlight flips up lightly from the top um, let me just move that pad out of the way right here so you're going to Go flip down and flip up, and that's how you relieve the tension. So now we've got all of that taken care of. Might as well just clean up some of those pads and buttons that fell out of the way. If you're wondering where I'm putting them, I'm just sitting them off to the side. You can see there. And then we also have the speaker that has kind of fallen out of place. And the little felty bit, the little dust screen that kind of goes on the speaker. And the last thing I have to deal with here is that start and select button. But the start and select button looks like it's part of the main board. I don't actually see a way to remove it. So what am I supposed to do? Like, can the start and select button just pull out? <gasps> it does. It's not even a pressure fit, I don't think. I think that plastic held it in place, so I can hopefully just pull the start and select button out. It doesn't want to come. <sighs> if I'm doing something wrong, like I feel like I'm one of those sorry souls that didn't spend enough time watching YouTube videos to make this successful. So I am not sure with that. I'm just going to fold it over and hear all of you scream. No, you're putting too much pressure on that board. <sighs> Let's see here. I would really love that certain select button to come out, but it doesn't want to. Is there a trick? I don't know. And I push the certain select button from the bottom and see if it releases it. It doesn't. Makes me very sad. So, I'm going to assume that I've got to leave this together. So let's zoom back in here. The problem that I feel is wrong with this unit is the fuse. And if it is the fuse, it will need to be replaced. Now this system has two fuses that need to be concerned with. There is this fuse on the back, you can see right here. And this has to do with the voltage that comes from this connector, from your adapter, to charge your battery. And then there's another ba uh, res uh, fuse on the other side that deals with the battery powering the system. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to put a little continuity tester on there. And we will see how that goes. And we're going to... Put my little multimeter to the whole BPBP beep, beep, beep continuity. And I'm going to go from one side to the other side. I have continuity. So this fuse appears to be good. Now I knew that this fuse was good because 
the battery will light up for a quick second and then turn off. Um, but it won't do much more than that. But when this fuse here is is damaged, you can actually still play the Game Boy Advance Micro uh, with the uh, fully charged battery. So the fuse that is in question is, let me see if I can drop this down a little bit and we can look together because I don't have a microscope. I just have very precise eyes and I feel the fuse we're talking about is right here. This one here, uh, which has in my picture a G. I feel that is the fuse for from the battery into the system. So I'm going to take my probes and we're going to test that fuse. One there, one there. And I have nothing, no continuity between that little device that has a G on it. Just so you can see, I'm going to see if I can bring it closer to the camera. We'll see how out of focus it goes. But we will try. Oh, there it is. That little G. So I am going to try replacing that G fuse with another one. Oh. Now is this, is this normal? This little bypass wire? Uh, if any of you have worked on these in the past... Um, comment because I feel like Nintendo wouldn't use a little wire they would actually build it into the circuit board so we will we will find out uh, let's take a look here I'm going to change from my big old fat um uh, soldering tip to a tiny little skinny guy. Heat that bad boy up. Okay, I'm going to see if I can't get any closer without obstructing my view, right? This is a very sensitive process, and if I mess up, maybe I'm not going to get a video, but also maybe I'm going to have a Game Boy Micro that just doesn't work anymore. And that is not something that I'm kind of in the market for. Like Currently in 2024, I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, be careful. That's worth that's worth two hundred dollars Canadian. Two hundred dollars Canadian's a lot of money. Okay, so I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do with this, but we will try it, and you will all get to see in real life how badly I do. Okay, so toss some flux on there. What I'm going to do, let's see if I can zoom out on this. How far? Way out. Okay. I'm going to prep a replacement fuse right now. Here's my big roll of fuses. I'm just going to grab. Why are you, why are you so out of focus? I'm going to grab one. This one has a C. It's not even a G. Or I'm going to say C is better than G. Now, knowing my luck, I'm going to hit this, and it's just going to go firing across the, the counter, and I'm going to lose it, and I'll have to go for the next one down. So, let's... Oh. There we go. I'm going to just take this, 
There it is. Then I've got my flux. And I'm going to just clean off my soldering tip. And let's see how we can do. You know what? A few people had mentioned maybe I should go hot air on those. Let's try a hot air tip. The great thing is, I was wondering, you know, maybe this circuit board's a little too crowded, but if we look in that area, that is the only thing that is really happening over there. So, Let's, let's take a little bit of time, switch out the head on the hot air station, go to something just micro tiny. And let's uh, see what we can't do here. I don't like that. Okay. You know what? I'm sorry. I tried. I, uh, I don't know. I feel like that hot air is too imprecise. Is it my fault for wanting better? I don't, I don't know. Comment, like, share. You know, tell me, tell me I didn't do a good job. What I, I like to do with components like this is let's put a little bit of extra solder on them you know heat them up evenly and get them off of the the area
See, to my mind, I felt that worked much better. What we'll do is I'm going to just get a little bit of desoldering wick. Because I realize I got a little bit on one of the pads. We go. And then pick up. So, for anyone who's uh, wondering, the fuses on this are 0306 size. Um, And I think I'm good here. What we'll do is we'll take hit this with a, a little bit of a rubbing alcohol and a swab. A quick little inspection and I see that I've got a connection on both sides and of course I got an out of focus camera thanks everybody who stayed with me through that whole out of focus experience so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out raise up this lens a bit and uh, we'll try fitting it back together um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use that rubbing alcohol, clean off these pads a bit. Clean off those contacts with a part of the swab that I didn't use uh, for 
removing the flux. Clean off this pad as well. And clean off these conductors, these are the contact pads. Okay, so those are all good. Maybe while we're in here, we'll just we'll clean on the speaker contacts. Okay, so I'm going to take my little contact piece here for the speaker, drop it in there. I'm going to take my little speaker and drop it in there oh got a little bit of a problem because it doesn't line up so we'll just shimmy it take this and lean it forward into here so i want to test it before i put it all back together so the important part is is to make sure that one, I've got the buttons in place, and two, I've got the ribbon cable back in the main one, and the little ribbon cable, or I assume is the backlight, in there. Perfect. Just in case there's any risk of anything on that board. Clean that off. Okay. So. Up, down, left, right, and we'll go B, uh oh B, and A. And A. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we'll fold that back up. I think we need to make sure that the power switch goes into the little power switchy holder. I think, I think we're good there. And then we'll tilt this up. Now, I don't know what the best way is to get these ribbon cables back in, but I'm going to try my best. Mm, let's try trying it this way. Maybe I have to get low on the camera to kind of see those ribbon cables. I feel like a lot of guys who would be editing this together would want to cut. And I'm going to give you one full shot of this. Because at the end of the day, you are going to be suffering exactly as I am. Okay. So hmm. Should I be popping up the screen to do this? I guess. That is a tiny little pain in the butt. Insertion point. Of course, I don't want to break it, right? Mm -hmm. 
นะครับน the A button twisted okay so there you go the A button and my directional pad okay now let's try this ribbon cable the one first there's no there's no play in these I get it that they just pop in there but they don't just pop in there <laughs> if anyone wants to comment on how they managed to do this And if they want to comment on how they did this well on camera, oh, 100% success. Okay, so I think I got them both in. <sighs> I tell you, stressful things like some people say like LSATs are hard. I don't know. Try putting back a Game Boy Advanced Micro. Okay, we're in. All of the pieces are falling back into place. So what I'm going to do to test is I'm going to take my battery with our red down south and our black up north. to turn it on oh my gosh so it works it was that fuse so we know it works we know that I'm successful um, I don't know if the volume worked on the speaker but let's put it back together and find out you all seen it first and of course I'm gonna get all of you to correct me if I mess up so what I want to do before I put it back together check the air uh, the directional pad and the a B buttons make sure the membranes are correct they are okay so let's run this back in reverse I need my Phillips screwdriver and I know it was this one and that one that one let's hope it was those two but before we do that, I am going to put in the metal shield that clips under the edge and kind of falls into place. Uh, but of course, goes under the game cartridge slot. Ugh. Um, note to self, please don't do this again. Sorry, did I say it out loud? Yes, I did. Okay. I'm going to just get that metal thing. There we go. So we got that there, that there, that there. Metal plates in place. I'm going to check the buttons. One, two, three, four. Directional pad. Okay, we're good. So, first 
yellow dichromate screw. I'm going to pretend it went here. Done. And the next one, I think it went here. The great thing about Nintendo is they love to show you the layer at which it, the screw goes in, right? They put a little arrow or they put a little circle. Okay, and of course we're not going to over tighten them. Okay, so we got that, we got that, we got that. Next layer is the plastic layer with the buttons. Now before these buttons go into place, we're going to put the shoulder buttons back in. So the first one is our right shoulder button. Focus. Right. Cool. That one goes in here. Spring goes in that little hole. I love when focusing doesn't work. That goes in there. And then, of course, there's a little clip. So we got click, click, click. Done. And then we're going to take our left. And left is going to go in here, and it's going to go with a little spacer, and then, and then under that tab. And then we get click, 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 done. Done. Come on. Oh, the spring is too springy. Oh, if the spring is too springy, what we're going to have to do is, well, one, keep our calm, but two, we're going to have to get that plastic piece ready to go in there right away. Okay. So, take the plastic piece, put it into play, use it to hold in the la right, one, two, three, oh, you click, click, click. And we're going to put the one in the left. And this one here we lift up a little bit, just so we can put it back together. Yep. Looks good. Ooh, the side needs to be adjusted. There we go. Click, 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 click. I like it. So I only feel that the all we're putting in here is one silver screw. And that one also is a focus. Focus. <sighs> Phillips head. Focus. If you ever think it's not going in straight, back it off a bit. Do like a half a turn counterclockwise. Okay. So I've got four silver screws, two yellow dichromate screws. That sounds about right to get this put back into play. So put that in, make sure the top tabs clip in place, side tabs clip in place. <gasps> and look, the volume button is missing. So before this metal piece goes on, take that back off. We are going to put the volume control back in. Now the question is, <gasps> look here, the volume control has a little pin that needs to go in before that screw goes in. So, that's fine. We'll back this off. And we'll sit that down in the void. And then we'll just lift the plastic up just the littlest bit to get that under there, like that. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Done. And we're gonna re-secure this little guy down into place. Always check. Done. I'm a big fan of always torque but never over torque. And I didn't say twerk, I said torque. Okay, so metal back plate on again. Make sure it goes in there and there and there. And then let's, of course, do the check. Click, click, click. Yep, I feel clicking. You hear clicking. Okay, so now we're on this compartment. This compartment is... Uh, 
a silver one here. Uh-oh, I should have taken a picture. And then a silver one down here, I believe. And do a silver one up here. A silver, silver, look at this, silver tri-wing. Love my life. And then a silver tri-wing can go up top. Nope. Oh, yeah. I really hope a lot of you are going to comment on how I put these in the wrong spots. Silver one down here. And then the yellow dichromates go here. Like I said, if it's wrong, please let me know. Ooh. Oh. Yellow dichromate is a Phillips head. That's why the tri-wing made a bad sound. Oh no, okay. So I feel those are all snug. All that's left to do is put in those other little black tri-wings. So I'm going to start with the top. Let's uh, put a little camera up. Focus. If anyone would like to recommend what they use for a camera, let me know. I'm going to tell you, and I've told a, a few other people on some of my other channels, like I use my... Uh oh I use my cell phone. This is a Samsung A52 dual SIM phone. I use this so I can have a work SIM card and a personal SIM card in there at all times. And I'm not, not too worried with it. I think the quality is pretty good. I feel like there's you know, some better options, but they're not cost-effective options. I can get myself an iPhone 15 Ultra. I don't even know what it is. XL Pro Maximum. But I mean, that's not, that's not cost-effective. I'm a, I'm a technician. I stretch my dollar, right? If I was, if I was worried about uh, spending every dollar, I would not be using this. I would be using a, you know, a G, what's the, uh, that gaming thing? G, GXT, GTX, Windows powered, like flip up. It looks like a Nintendo DS, but it's a uh, it's a Windows computer. Yeah, get one of those. Seven hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. I don't know. I find that most of my gaming is still on a PlayStation Portable Three uh, Go. The Go, the little one, that flip up one. I think it's so great. Tiny little pocket sized. I am starting to find that the. Uh, 3ds or the new 3ds is a really good system what uh what i am thinking is you know, do i use the new 2ds i would like to find like a new 3ds but not xl i think that'd be a freaking awesome okay so we got this battery in here remember red goes at the bottom black goes at the top like that and I'll use a little screwdriver to push it in and we'll put the battery in there the battery compartment like I said just a little clip in and the screw should still be attached to it that's the important part yep there's that little screw and it's a Phillips head it 
done, done, done. And it looks, uh, looks a little rough, that's green. So let's see if we can clean it up. Recommendation for mo almost all screens, always wipe up and down. Use distilled water or like kettle water from like a, a kettle. And I know I said to all of you that I got something imported from China. <sighs> what is it? Let's check it out. It is a custom faceplate Mario themed. This is not the greatest. But it's going to allow me to take the original OEM gray and put it someplace safe for many, many years to come. Okay. With that, set that back. So the way you put these in is I believe you start on the left-hand side. You start on the left-hand side, get those clips in, and then you settle the right-hand side in, and there's these clips that deal with it or is it the other way around you put the clips in first and then settle the left hand let's put the clips in first let's see if we can go against the grain and i don't know there we go i think we got it Ooh, looks classy ready let's go for the click 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 yep Okay, only game I have to test, Lord of the Rings. Ready, everybody? Maiden Voyage. Let's see how bad I mess this up. Perfect. Up and down works. Let's get some light off of the subject. Well... I feel like that was a success. Bad Fuse was completely replaced. And all of my buttons seem to work. That is awesome. Hey, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, if I messed up anywhere, please let me know because your feedback is super important. Um, and... Uh, have yourself a great January because there's not much time left. Happy 2024. <laughs> Bye and thanks for watching.